who are never done it, telling us how Muslim they are, how Islamic they are, have not been able to lift a single finger to come to the rescue of Al-Aqsa in Holy Jerusalem. I know that they have not. Places the liberation of Palestine right in the center of the heart of the Arab Revolution. How can you have an Arab Revolution as long as the Palestinian people remain prisoners of foreign occupation? The battle, however, has turned. The tide has turned in Syria. The government in Damascus is not going to fall. But we will be sure, be sure about that. That however many handheld shoulder missiles, however many knives to cut people's chests open to eat their hearts. Western governments give these people, no matter how many bishops and priests they behead, no matter how much money bankrupt Britain, which can't pay its electricity bills, which has millions of people unemployed, mass poverty stalking the land, but can find hundreds of millions of pounds to give to others to destroy Arab countries, no matter how much of that they do. The tide has turned. Syria has won the war. Syria <laughs> A different point than we may have stopped Sykes Pico to in its tracks. They have a lot of plans elsewhere, even in Saudi Arabia itself. I began to be suspicious a couple of years ago when British politicians whom I knew knew nothing about Arabia would come up to me and opine that, well, Saudi Arabia is not really one country, is it? There's Nath, there's Hijaz, there is Mecca, there is the Eastern Province. I knew then that they were beginning to think that even Saudi Arabia itself might need to be partitioned if the going got rough enough. But I like to think that just as Stalingrad was the turning point of the Second World War, when the hordes surrounded the city in their hundreds of thousands, and starved the people so that they ate every rat, every dog, every horse in the city. Some reduced even to eating their own dead. Just as the Nazi hordes thought that they could choke the life out of the then Soviet Union by winning the Battle of Stalingrad, so this battle to defend Syria will prove a turning point for the Arabs. I believe that it can be so. I believe in the Arabs more than the Arabs believe in themselves. And they have to find a way to break out of this malaise of waiting for the foreigner to tell them what to do, to organize what's going to happen in their countries, and I believe that they can do it. Because there are many bad Arabs, and I've met most of them. <laughs> There's one called Fuad Senora. <laughs> I turned up at his office one or two days after the Israeli surrender 
to the Hezbollah forces in 2006. I've been on many television programs. The chair referred to one of the most celebrated on Sky News. Well, I said that Hezbollah were giving Israel a bloody good hiding on the sky. Baking August of 2006, before I even sat down, this man I'd known for 20 years shouted at me from behind his desk, Stop saying we won the war. We didn't win the war. I said, Prime Minister, I've known many Arab leaders that lost wars and claimed they won them. You're the first Arab leader to win a war. Because he 